Hello there, and welcome back to another video. Lately I've been reading the Revenge of the Sith novelization by Matthew Stover and absolutely loving it. The additional detail around the rescue of the Chancellor and the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin against Count Dooku is fascinating. It touches on the narrative Dooku was fed and how he was manipulated by Palpatine into thinking he had a big role to play in the future. So I want to dig into that a bit more in this video and explain exactly what Dooku thought his role would be in the Empire. Without further delay, let's get into the video. We begin with Dooku and Palpatine together in the General's quarters on the Invisible Hand as they watch Kenobi and Skywalker move closer to their position. Dooku is embarrassed at the thought of having to be captured by Anakin. Palpatine attempts to change his thought process, posing the question of having it be more embarrassing for Skywalker to have Dooku live. The pair of Sith Lords have influenced the galaxy into sharing the opinion of the Chosen One being the greatest Jedi alive. The Count speaks of his fatigue at playing the villain for so long, as he looks forward to an honourable captivity. The plan was for Dooku to be bested in combat by Skywalker and captured, where he would sit out the remainder of the war in prison. During his imprisonment, he would conveniently discover the lengths of the Separatist crimes against civilization went to. General Grievous would be the scapegoat. There's no way Dooku would take the fall. He was too important to his master's future plans. After this, he would be able to join the new government, the Galactic Empire, with no harm to his reputation. Dooku's mind lingers on this new government. He he hates the current Republic, viewing it as a messy scramble amongst the ignorant rabble and subhuman creatures to see what idea was favoured the most. You can already tell by his thoughts there that he viewed himself above most people, especially those who weren't human. The new government he was looking forward to serving would be authority personified, specifically human authority. A quick sidestep here, but it will make sense in a second. The Confederacy of Independent Systems, also known as the Separatists, or CIS for short, were made up of star systems dissatisfied with the Republic, with Dooku serving as its head of state. They were also secretly supported by major galactic corporations whom Dooku met with on Geonosis prior to the arena scene. It was by no coincidence that these powerful supporters were made up of non-humans. At the end of the Clone Wars, these aliens would be wiped out with their riches and systems coming under the control of the Empire, led by human beings. Dooku saw himself serving an Empire of Men by smashing the Jedi Order to create a new one, one that fit his vision. This one would not be bound to corrupt politicians, but would have the absolute freedom to bring authority and peace to a galaxy lacking of both in his eyes. This order would not negotiate nor mediate, it would force. The survivors of the Jedi Order, being the ones that turned to the dark side, would become the army of the Sith, known as the Fist of the Empire. He wouldn't stop here either. He planned to forcibly remove Force-capable children from human and near-human worlds, such as Dathomir, to strengthen the future of his Sith army. Sidious wanted Kenobi dead, killed by Dooku, believing it could possibly be the final key to unlock the darkness in Anakin. The Count had reservations about this, seeing as though Obi-Wan's master was his own former Padawan, Qui-Gon Jinn. He saw him as practically a grandson. Sidious convinced Dooku by telling him Obi-Wan had been indoctrinated by the Jedi, far beyond retrieval. Count Dooku was still apprehensive, as this situation had come about rather quickly. He asked Sidious if Skywalker was truly the man they wanted, viewing him as volatile and a threat to himself as much as his opponents, not to mention having that revolting robotic arm. Sidious viewed the robotic arm as perfect for how the public would perceive them when their plan came to fruition. It would be a symbol of peace, justice, and heroism. The point of the staged rescue of the Chancellor was to test Anakin and see if he was capable of breaking the shackles of the Jedi's limitations. However, Count Dooku Dooku also believed that it was a test of himself, to see if he was worthy of mastery. By the end of the events that were about to unfold, he would have initiated Anakin into the darkness. Failure wasn't even a thought to him. Dooku began to relax, to the point he imagined the outcome of his master's brilliant plan. Anakin would have heroically captured him and become the ultimate hero, certainly the greatest hero in the history of the Republic, perhaps of the Jedi Order too. The loss of Obi-Wan would only add to the sadness in his words, as Anakin would give Holonet interviews, bringing to light the Separatist corruption, as well as reluctantly insinuating that corruption within the Jedi Order extended the length of the war. He would then announce the creation of a new order of force-using warriors, which he would be commanding general of. Within a matter of minutes, Dooku would have killed Obi-Wan Kenobi, and with his death would come the death of the Republic. Dooku's eyes began to mist at the thought of his and Sidious's years of work reaching the climax today. His master orders him to compose himself, as he has one final role to play before the galaxy is theirs. Dooku leaves the room as Kenobi and Skywalker have arrived. Fast forward through the fight, after Obi-Wan has been knocked unconscious and it is a duel between Anakin and Count Dooku. Sidious decides to intervene, offering advice to Anakin, which he finishes by telling him to kill Dooku. This caught Dooku off guard, where he pondered if his master truly understood the advice he had just given. He locks sabers with Anakin when he has the sickening feeling of betrayal. He remembers that treachery is the way of the Sith. 
Fast forward again slightly to after Dooku has had his hands cut off by Anakin and he is on his knees. Dread is overcoming him, yet a small part of his heart is hoping that he is wrong, that Palpatine has not betrayed him, and that this is all a part of his plan. This small bit of hope is wiped away as the next words from the Chancellor are him praising Anakin. He then orders him to kill him. Dooku snaps, begging the Chancellor for his life, saying he was offered immunity and that they had a deal. As cold as ever, Palpatine replies that their deal was only in place if he was released, not used as bait to kill his friends. These words seal Dooku's fate in his own mind as the realisation hits him. Everything has been going to plan. His master's plan, not his own. Palpatine barks once more at Anakin to kill him, which Dooku knows is coming. He looks up into Anakin's eyes for the last time, where he realises he has been deceived for many, many years. He was never the true apprentice, he was just a tool. His whole life, everything he has done and achieved, his dreams and vision for the future of the Empire and the army of the Sith were nothing but a lie sold to him. His true purpose was to exist for this, to be Anakin Skywalker's first cold-blooded kill. There we have it guys, the tragic tale of what Count Dooku believed was waiting for him in the Galactic Empire. Dooku is a great character and someone I'd love to dig into more. Unfortunately, in the end, he was just a pawn in Palpatine's grand plan. Let me know what you thought of this video, and until next time, may the Force be with you. Always.